Science Workshop. In this session, we are going to talk about spelling correction for 100 plus languages. I'm Jing Wen Lu. First, um, for a quick intro of myself. Uh, I'm a Principal Applied Science Manager in Search and Artificial Intelligence at Microsoft. I have been a, a Applied Science Leader driving key areas of query writing for Microsoft Bing. My team is responsible for systems that provide the functionality that users expect in modern search, such as spelling correction, synonym expansion, query intent classification, and rewriting. All of this, of course, is to help you to discover rich content on the web. Microsoft has also deeply invested in the deep learning way, with in-house very large-scale pre-trained models for NLP for both natural language understanding and natural language generation. We apply state-of-the-art models in production to bring better search results to Microsoft users. We all have the experience of misspelling or mistyping words as we compose essays or documents. Uh, write emails and text messages, or uh, conduct searches on search engines. Nowadays, we expect automatic spelling correction to detect and fix these errors. Uh, spelling correction is a classic natural language process problem. In this workshop, we will take a detailed tour of the various algorithms behind spelling correction models and how the latest advances in machine learning especially deep learning, have greatly helped us build cutting-edge web skill spell correction for more than 100 natural languages. Spelling correction is needed in many applications. Here's a screenshot of search. In the search box, you can, say that, you can see that a user mistyped spell with only one L. In this scenario, you're probably also familiar that uh, people uh, frequently make spelling um, mistakes. Sometimes we just don't remember how, sometimes just typo because of the keyboard is crowded. Sometimes it just, we couldn't remember how to spell a word and just try to spell as it sounds. Um, uh, for a search engine, we found that it's about 15% of the queries um, contain spell errors. It's quite common. So if you uh, make spelling errors in query, don't feel bad. All of us do. This is a, a screenshot of uh, email. And uh, this is obviously another area people frequently make mistakes in the spelling. And here the mistake is indicated by the red uh, wave line under the word. Uh, here is another one is in Microsoft Word. Uh, similarly, we have those red uh, waves under the wrongly spelled word. And if you right click, it, it will give you suggestions. You can easily go to the right one. Let's talk about spelling errors. There are all kinds of spelling errors. Broadly speaking, there are two categories. So take a look at this sentence. The Energy Department orders sweeping review. Um, we can find some errors is called no word error. So what that means is that the word introduced here, the error of course, uh, is not really a valid word in this language. So you can see the the, the energy. So the sometimes and frequent actually, this is one of the frequent errors, uh, is spelled as th sometimes te, sometimes th, and so on. Uh, energy uh, here, you can see that uh, uh, is introduced as uh, energi instead of y. Obviously, this is not part of the language. So we generally call that no word error. Uh, there are different kind of uh, category of errors we call real word error. So in this category, uh, basically, if you take the word individually to see uh, to look at them, they are all correct. Like the energy depot, uh, the energy debt, 
tech energy department, the energy depth, tan energy department. So all of the words here are correct, but in this content uh, context, they are obviously wrong. And so spelling is not really a simple matter of detecting invalid words and finding the right word by at a distance. Um, misspelling and typos can overlap with valid words. And very, very rare words may be correctly spelled technical terms or acronyms and abbreviations. Uh, instead, spell correction needs to infer the most likely formulation from an imperfect input, taking the entire statement into consideration. To correct both no word errors and real word errors, we first would generate candidates. Candidates are valid words that have a similar letter sequence to the error. Candidate corrections from the spelling error, TH, might include THE, THEN, TEA, and TCH, and THERE, and so on. So we then rank the candidates using a distance metric between the correction and the surface error. Intuitively, among these possible corrections, THE, the is more likely than THERE. -E. Well, we'd like to have a metric that shares such intuition. At a distance is a great measure in this regard. It basically takes a number of edits required to convert an error to the correction. This obviously will have a great deal to do with how the errors are generated to begin with. If it's typed, then keyboard layout would play a large role. Uh, adjacent characters on keyboard should have shorter distance. Some errors occur due to uh, the same pronunciation, like C and K. Yes, uh, this kind of uh, phonetic similarity can also help to define the distance. Depends on how the text is produced, there are many ways to define at a distance efficiently. Typically, we would prefer a candidate has minimal at a distance. There are lots of good reference in at a distance available on the web. I'm not going to talk in detail here, but you certainly can look it up if needed. Another intuition we have for spelling correction is we should prefer more frequent words or the ones more likely to occur in the context. The noisy channel model offers a way to formalize this intuition. And thanks to a, a lot of scholars have done research thoroughly in this area, um, particularly this one I like a lot and to refer to, and also I borrow the material from here, is um, from uh, Professor Daniel Jaroski and Professor James Martin in their speech and language processing, uh, in particular this chapter, Spelling Correction and the Noisy Channel. The Noisy Channel model is a framework used in spell checkers, question answering, speech recognition, and machine translation. In this model, the goal is to find the intended word given a word where the letters have been scrambled in some manner. There are many detailed explanations widely available. Um, here is an illustration from Professor Jaroski and Professor Martin. So basically you can see that uh, we have some original word and then we imagine it goes through some noisy channel and then come out with a noise word. So the goal is that uh, we will try to find this, um, the word can match the noisy word the first, uh, the, uh, the best. So we have all kinds of hypotheses. So we run this hypothesis through the channel and to produce a noisy word one, noisy word two, and so on and then try to find what is our best candidate. So in spelling scenario, this channel introduced noise, uh, basics like letter insertion, deletion, rotation, people also call that trans, transport, uh, transpo, transposition, addition, and these noise disguises original intended words. 
So the channel model is to find the true word by testing every word of the language and seeing which one comes the closest to the misspelled word. So we see that in observation X, this is a misspelled word. And then the model is trying to find the word W that generate the misspelled word. Out of all possible words in the vocabulary V, we want to find the word W so that um, P, um, the probability of W given X is highest. With the Bayes rule, we transform this equation into a set of other probabilities. With a simplification, uh, we arrive at this formula. And so basically, we we have two sub um, probabilities um, to estimate to come up with the probability of the correction given the spelling error. So the first part is uh, the channel model. Uh, let's try to model this part. So let's try to estimate the probability of the error given um, the word. And then there's also a prior, so try to um, edit, uh, predict the probability of the word. And this is more widely known as a language model for the prior. And channel model, sometimes you can see people talking about this as a um, error model. So um, for the whole noisy channel model, we can uh, sum it up in these steps. So the the goal is to return the corrections, and the function is that uh, you have a noisy channel spelling coming in. There's a word X, that's your original word, and then we have a dictionary, uh, have all those possible words, and we have a language model. Uh, we have an added distance probabil added probability. Um, then we return the correction. So basically, in the candidates part is that for all the strings at added distance one, from X that are belonging to the, the dictionary D. And for each of them, we need to have the channel model to give us the added probability. And we also have the language model to give us the prior. And the scoring basically um, can be further simplified to just have the uh, logged um, probability of the um, edit, which is the channel, um, plus the log of the prior, the language model. And then we try to find the highest one. In the noisy channel model, we first generate candidates within certain criteria. Uh, we typically use, well, we shouldn't say typically, uh, we can start with uh, at a distance equals one. Um, to keep thing, to keep matters simple, and also at a distance equals one contributes a um, majority of the spelling errors already. Uh, we have done some study, and well, probably you know seventy eighty percent of the um, the errors are in that category. So here is an example um, for the with at a distance equals one and like EH or MEH, THE, and so on. And here we also have the edit uh, types. So um, from the mistyped word TH to the correct word EH, we consider this as insertion because your correct word did not have the T. Now your noise channel added the T, so that's an insertion. And so we use this uh, hash mark here to say this is uh, basically that was empty. Um, here for the TH to MEH, basically we consider this is uh, a substitution. Here is um, the correct word M um, is substitute in the channel um, to with the T. Um, you can also see that the transposition so it's EH and the HE. So basically these two words, uh, two letters are swapped. And we also have deletion. Um, here is that uh, the word C, uh, the character C is deleted so that we have a mistaken word at TH. The channel model is just try to 
predict or estimate the probability probability of the edit, given there's so many different types like deletion, insertion, substitution. How can we estimate the likelihood of P of X given W? A perfect model of the probability that a word will be mistyped would condition on all sorts of factors related to how the text was produced, uh, which can be uh, the user, her or himself, uh, the keyboard layout, the, sometimes even the intermediate software converting speech to text, um, OCR, which is the optical character recognition software converting image to characters and so on. Uh, to keep things simple, we will estimate probability of X given W by looking at the local context only. We will look at the identity of the correct letter itself, the misspelling and the surrounding letters. In practice, this will give us a reasonable estimation already. To compute the probability of each edit in this way, we'll need a confusion matrix that contains counts of errors. Uh, I will go very um, brief on this. So basically, you need to find um, you need to find, let's say, for example, a substitution matrix. Uh, we will have a square matrix of a size of, let's say, English alphabet, which is 26 letters, 26 by 26. Um, that represents the number of times one letter was incorrectly used instead of another. Um, where do we get these confusion matrices then? One way is to extract them from lists of spell, uh, misspellings. Uh, there are also um, widely available material online. Um, you can find them uh, estimated from various corpus. There are also other sophisticated ways to produce such confusion matrix. So we'll not, work, or we'll not cover those here either. Um, if you are interested in the details, the first thing you probably can start with uh, um, Professor Daniel Jaroski and Professor James Hart Martin's speech and language processing book. They have a very good reference and summary on this part. Now let's see how to estimate the prior. So the prior probability of each correction word uh, probability of the word is a language model probability of the word w in context uh, which can be computed using any language model from unigram uh, to to bigram trigram or foregram and there are also other more advanced uh, language model out there uh, with sophisticated algorithms like backoffs um, let's start in the following table by assuming a unigram language model I got this table from a arbitrary corpus in hand, obviously. So uh, Unigram model is very easy to compute, but unfortunately it doesn't consider context much. It is important to use uh, larger language models that Unigrams, uh, larger uh, language uh, models than Unigrams to achieve better performance. Language model itself is an important topic in NLP and uh, there are a bunch of details you can easily find on web as well. So uh, the purpose here is just to introduce this concept as it is an important component in spelling correction. Now let's see the final probabilities for each of the potential corrections. We have already seen that earlier. Uh, the scoring basically is to add up these two probabilities. One is channel model, one is the language model. And we have here the role probability of this channel model, and then we take a log. And then same thing for the language model here. We have a role probability, and after taking the log, and then we will come to these two numbers. And then the final score basically is just to um, sum them up. So our implementation of the noisy channel model here chooses the as the best correction. And the score is the highest is minus two. 
and uh, 10 as the second most likely word, uh, li likely word has a slightly higher score than the next one, T. So in this case, it works out all right. Remember that our original sequence is meant to be the energy department order sweeping review. So here is the where, where the mistake happened. So noisy channel is quite simple and straightforward, especially when we only consider simple at a distance rules and uh, low order language models. Uh, it has been the core algorithm of spelling correction. So far, we have been using noisy channel model to produce corrections. One of the biggest constraints here is we need to have a comprehensive and up-to-date lexicon. If we're going to build spelling correction for web search scale, this can be a big challenge. One way to tackle this is to use SMT. SMT stands for Statistical Machine Translation, which is designed to translate one language to another. In spelling correction, we're treating type to string as one language and the correction being the other, even though linguistically they are the same language. You can consider SMT for spelling is an update to classic noisy channel model. How do we estimate channel model in SMT? First, we need to have parallel corpus. In spelling correction, let's say that uh, uh, for web search, that means we need to have large amount of query and correction pairs. So you can see that the top row is meant, that's a correction, and bottom row is the typed. Um, so once we have that, we would like to estimate translation um, probability, which is a misspelled to the correction. But we don't have the alignment, meaning that we don't know how the characters or the letters are corresponding to each other in these paired text. So this is a chicken and egg problem. Um, if we had the alignments, we could estimate the translation probability uh, just like we uh, discussed earlier to compute the confusion matrix. Um, but if we had the translation probability, uh, we could uh, estimate the alignment. Um, but right now, we don't have either. So IBM model uh, are a sequence of increasingly complex models used in statistical machine translation to train a translation model and alignment model. It has been uh, very popular all the way till the 1990s until uh, neural machine translation um, began to dominate. IBM models are um, principled probabilistic formulation and has um, tractable inference. Uh, it uses expectation maximization algorithm to estimate alignment and translation probability. Let's take a closer look at this pair of the text. So is something Microsoft supposed to be Microsoft? So the meant, let's break it down to character, uh, letter level and then typed as well. And then you can see here, um, the letters are aligned. You can find that uh, transpos transposition problem uh, we can find the in insertion, deletion, and the substitution, all those edits we talked about earlier. So in the IBM model, um, first we need to enumerate all these token pairs from the alignments. So this all those possible alignments, alignments, of course. So and in the EM algo, um, first initial step is all, align all alignments um, are equally likely. So that we initialize them with some uniform probability. And then because with the data we have in hand, uh, you can see we have a microphone, m and Rosebud, all these uh, instances in our training data. So with the initial uh, step, we the model can quickly learn that MCI 
is often aligned with MIC. And then after one iteration, the alignments like MCI, MIC are more likely because the model is going to see more and more such uh, occurrences in the training data. And then after some more iterations, it becomes apparent that the RS and ROS are more likely to be uh, um, the pair. So at the end, uh, the model will converge and then we will get our translation probability estimated and also the alignment will be revealed by this EML goal. Now let's look at SMT decoding with the beam search. At the core, SMT is still noisy channel model. People have modified the classic formula to fit different scenarios better. One common thing to do is to introduce different weights to the channel model and the prior. Uh, here is the alpha associated with the channel model. We also call translation model here and also beta for language model. Here we have language model table and translation model table. As a simple search heuristic, Beam Search has been used to decode models developed by the NLP community for decades. Indeed, it is no noteworthy that Beam Search is one of the few NLP algorithms that has stood the test of time. Here is an illustration of using Beam Search decoding in MST for spelling correction. So the string is Microsoft and we need to uh, decode that at each step, scoring by combining, combining the translation model and the language model score with the, each individual weights and always keep top N and then traverse through. There's no formal guarantee that beam search will return or even approximate the highest scoring candidate under a model. Um, there are alternative search heuristics out there. However, beam search has repeatedly proven its merit empirically and has largely been the top choice in NLP task. Now let's talk about uh, neural machine translation for spelling correction. Deep learning has gained a lot of attention in recent years. We've seen significant advancements in natural language processing in the last year through large transformer networks like BERT, UNILLM, and DEBERTA. These models have set new high record in various benchmarking tests for tests like sentiment analysis, question answering, sentence similarity, and etc. Given spelling correction is one of the classic NLP tasks, it is natural to think if such models can be beneficial here as well. There's another reason to try deep learning in spelling correction. We have always wanted to train an inclusive spelling correction model. By inclusive, I mean we want to be able to provide great spelling service for all languages. This is not an easy task for traditional algorithms like SMT since it will require lots of quality bytext data for training. One nice property of deep learning, which is a capability of zero-shot learning, take adva taking advantage of this should also give a boost in model performance for languages with low or no resource with regarding to training data. With these considerations, my colleagues in Microsoft, a group of researchers, applied scientists, and engineers tried to build inclusive spelling correction with deep transformer models. The result is amazing, and I have a link here to the blog post we have published about this work. Here is uh, the model architecture we adopted for our work. So this is a typical sequence to sequence transformer architecture. Uh, since spelling, uh, sp spelling correction is naturally a sequence to sequence, so this model architecture fits pretty well. So the general flow here is that when the query comes in and you go through the segmentation, 
um, subword segmentation. And then you have the transformer encoder, and then you go through the decoder part. So from the start, you decode to download, and then and then you do a beam search and go to the next one, on to the win windows, and all the way to the end. And then we put this um, tokenized correction together on on the word level, so there will be the final result for this sequence to sequence um, transformer based spelling correction results. Our work is inspired by BART. BART is Facebook research um, work published in 2019. It is a denoising autoencoder auto for pre-training sequence to sequence models. BART is trained by first corrupting text with a noising function and then learning a model to reconstruct the original text. Inputs to the encoder is corrupted text. Common noising function is also given here, including token masking, permutation, rotation, deletion, and text infilling. Don't you think some of them are uh, just like spelling errors? So just see spelling, we can also uh, similarly consider uh, the errors are kind of noise function added to the original text like rotation, insertion, deletion, and replacement. The corrupted text is encoded with the bidirectional encoder like BERT, and then the likelihood of the original text is calculated with an autoregressive decoder like GPT. For fine tuning, uncorrupted text is input to both the encoder and decoder, and then we use representations from the final hidden state of the decoder to generate the output sequence. The original paper introduced the use of BART in many natural language uh, processing tasks like natural language generation, translation, and com comprehension. Although spelling correction was not mentioned, we found its core concept fits the task of spelling correction very well. For spellers, the noising functions can represent common spelling errors users often make. BART is trained by corrupting text with the arbitrary noise function and learning a model to reconstruct the original text. Our model differs from BART in that we frame spelling correction as a character level sequence to sequence denoising auto autoencoder problem and build out pre training data with the character level mutations in order to mimic spelling errors. We have designed noise functions to generate common errors for rotation, insertion, deletion, and replacement. D models are data hungry. How do we get enough training data to build quality spelling correction models for hundreds of languages that are widely used on the web by users all over the world? One of the quests we have at Microsoft is to build inclusive NLP models to provide good quality services for all languages. For spelling correction, we have built statistical models for dozens of languages already. This is certainly not inclusive enough. How do we scale out spelling correction models fast and effectively? We thought about tapping into some special language properties. It's well known in the historical linguistics world that languages are rarely isolated. Most of the world's languages are known to be related to others. A group of languages descended from the same ancestor form a language family. They share a lot in orthography, the spelling and the other written conventions of a language, which stems from morphological and phonetical similarities. We have a hypothesis that building language family based multilingual spelling correction should help us to capture error patterns efficiently. Here is a table to show lexicon similarity between West Germanic languages, English, Dutch, Afrikaans, German, and uh, Luxembourgish. 
The orthographic, morphological, and semantic similarity between languages in the same group makes a zero-shot learning error model very efficient and effective. High-quality error model training data is abundant in high-resource languages like English and German in the Germanic language family. We also have a reasonable amount of data in Dutch. However, in the same language family, we have severe shortage of training data in Afrikaans or uh, Luxembourgish. Zero-shot learning makes learning spelling prediction for these low resources or no resource languages possible. So here is a brief introduction of how we actually produce uh, large training data for deep models to help us to capture the error model within the same language family uh, efficiently by first um, introduce pre-training data and then use the fine-tuning data we have already collected through the high resource languages we have in hand. So from the web crawl text, we will have abundant of text from all the, these languages we are targeted at, like English, German, Dutch, and so on. So we introduce a noise function um, for the spelling specifically on the character level uh, to corrupt the text to do the in insertion, deletion, replacement, uh, rotation, and for all the languages. And you can see here, we can just um, synthetically produce large amount of training data as, as much as we actually need. And then we utilize the zero-shot learning capability in uh, deep uh, transformer architecture um, with the fine-tuning data we already collect from high resource languages and to further train the parameters um, to estimate the the probability of a reconstructed text accordingly. So last is a recap. Um, just talk about the highlights in spelling correction history. So the most classic one is a noisy channel model and has the steps of generate the candidates, which is based on a dictionary and edit distance threshold with um, predefined. And the scoring function basically is try to estimate the channel model uh, and the prior, and then we just simply have the probability um, to be multiplied together. And then um, statistical machine translation gained a lot of steam, and we also utilize that to um, tackle the spelling correction problem. Uh, here, the main point is that we learn the error model through alignment, and we use beam search to find top end correction at each, each step. And uh, the benefit of statistical machine translation is that we could have, we could introduce character level and word level, um, both alignment and, uh, and the language models so that we can fit into our training data more efficiently. And the latest is a neural machine translation specifically for the deep models. Uh, deep bidirectional encoder, autoregressive decoder. We synthetically produce enough of training data by introducing a noising function to the normal text. And then the training is basically denoising and do the text re reconstruction. The transformer models has already proven to have a, a very good uh, grasp, on the, grasp on the semantic understanding so that we could have semantic correction with, the, with embedding. And also, um, because of the subword uh, tokenization, and um, we also have um, discovered that the multilingual capability in the deep models are quite appealing. Uh, with a zero-shot learning capability, we can effectively learn um, a spelling correction model for languages we typically do not have a whole lot of um, quality by text to begin with. So here, um, now this is the end of this workshop and thank you for attending.